This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, 29th May. I am Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, high cost of electricity in the region, a major talking point at Carillac CEO Symposium. OECS agriculture ministers examine revised action plan for the sector, and opposition updated on constitutional review process. Details are next. place to be Sunday June 3rd it's the Jubilee Big Lime at Progress Park starting at 12 noon and continuing into the evening come celebrate with Her Majesty the Queen as we commemorate Her Majesty the Queen's Diamond Jubilee make this a family fun day come and enjoy a variety of performances featuring several of our best entertainers there'll be drinks and food on sale so come have fun Sunday, June 3rd, Progress Park, St. Andrew, Her Majesty the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Celebration. Welcome back, viewers. The high cost of electricity in Grenada and the rest of the region has been dominating the minds of leaders in the regional electricity industry who have been challenged to devise innovative ways to meet the demands and expectations of consumers. They have been meeting in Grenada over the last few days in the Carilex CEO Symposium at the Grenadian Birex Resort. The conference is held every year to bring together CEOs from the region and outside to discuss issues facing the electric utility industry and to work towards common understanding. Dr. Gary Jackson, Executive Director of Carilec, says there's need for sensible discourse to deal with the challenges of high electricity prices and the calls across the region for the price to be brought down. He says stakeholders are knocking on their doors for answers or simply telling them to bring down the cost of electricity. We will need sensible discourse, one that is collective, collaborative, integrative, communal. No man is an island, and our island should never have to stand alone. The energy services we provide is so great, so essential, and so powerful. My dear friends and colleagues, with great power, comes with tremendous professional responsibility. The time for transformation is imminent. There is a tipping point. I'm not sure if you've heard of this, this novel, The Tipping Point, written by Malcolm Gladwell. The tipping point at which your leadership will transform economies to become resilient to undercurrents. As Malcolm Gladwell puts it, the tipping point is that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. I'm not asking you to wave a magic wand, because sometimes that's just what you're asked to do. But I'm asking you to think about how you approach the problem. You need to be that trigger 
that leader. You are no ordinary leader. You are a leader that touches every life in your society through the commodity that you provide. That leader that have the capacity to transform the lives of our Caribbean people to make it a better place for us to live. A leader that will help to transform the economy, to strengthen the links of our networks. A leader like no other that will break the chains of poverty. A leader like no other that will secure and sustain our Caribbean people energy future. Vernon Lawrence, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Grenlec, added that they are faced with the challenge of sustained high level of international oil prices and their dependence on imported fuel, which is pushing electricity rates to an all-time high. He says this is putting pressure on corporate customers, utilities, and, cons and consumers in general. Added to this, of course, is the impact of the global recession, where we have seen world leaders grapple with severe economic hardship increasing debt, rising unemployment, and political and social unrest. I mean, the fact that us utility plays such a critical role in, in the economies, it, it really means that an enormous amount of scrutiny and expectation is on us. And um, that has risen over the past years as the situation deteriorates. The discourse between our utilities and associates and, associates and customers must be rooted in our common interest in fostering the growth in our national economies. Managed constructively, the engagement with all parties will produce good results that advance national interests as well as those of our customers and our businesses. This is no easy task, but I don't have to tell you how important it is for us to get it right. The conference is being held under the theme, Transformational Leadership, Limitless Possibilities. Chairman of Carilec, Peter Williams, also spoke of the challenges they are faced with as leaders in their line of business. And our challenge now is to meet the expectations of cost and to provide our customers with alternatives. We have a situation where the plant and equipment that was installed, and this will also delight some of our sponsors, but the plant and equipment that was installed in the 70s and 80s to meet the high growth in demand is now aging and needs to be replaced. As mentioned, our traditional source of oil is almost uh, providing an unbearable strain, financial strain on our economies and testing the patience of our customers. There can be no doubt whatsoever that we can meet this challenge at a time where our people are need needing it most. In their eyes, we are the experts. And so with any tri uh, challenge comes tremendous opportunity. Work has begun to release the potential of the significant geothermal energy that exists in the region. Renewable energy is in the ascendance and prices are falling. Solar photovoltaic panels that were costing around five, four to five dollars a watt about six years ago are now selling about one dollar per US per watt. In other news, the revised Plan of Action for Agriculture in Grenada and the rest of the OECS was placed under the microscope on Tuesday during a meeting of OECS Agriculture Ministers. Details from Richard Peters of the Ministry of Agriculture. Ministers for Agriculture of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, met in Grenada Tuesday, May 29, to chart the way forward for agriculture in the subregion. Grenada's Minister for Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Michael Dennislet, hosted his counterparts from St. Lucia, Dominica and Montserrat at the Grenada Grand Beach Convention Center for one day to deliberate the revised Plan of Action for Agriculture in the OECS. The meeting was organized by the OECS Secretariat and the organization's senior economic planner, Randolph Cato, in addressing the ministers, warned them that there is a lot of work to be done. Ministers, the underlying consideration that must be focused on is that it cannot simply be business as usual, or rather, no business where agriculture is concerned in the OECS. We just cannot afford this. It will be far too costly for us in many ways, not the least the very terrible price that we will pay regarding our development goals and the improvement of the welfare of the people of the OECS, which really is our fundamental aim. He reminded them that serious commitment is required of them if the task of developing the agricultural sector is to succeed. 
Article 20 of the OECS Economic Union Protocol of the Revised Treaty of Bastia obligates the OECS member states to agree to the development of an agriculture policy which takes into account regional and global agreements and conventions and which offers a strategic framework for prioritizing regional programs that address the cross-border dimensions of agriculture. There's a lot of words to say that the treaty wants us to do some work in agriculture. Minister Lett said that even in a recession, there are opportunities. We must not lose sight of the fact that the recession has also created opportunities that we can leverage to improve the overall livelihoods of our people. However, this can only happen if we are willing to take the bold and decisive steps that are necessary to realize these benefits. It is no secret that the sub-region faces problems that are continuing to impede the growth and development of the agricultural sector for many years now. Among the most serious problems that we face, the low level of inter-regional trade, slow rate absor absorption of modern technologies, inadequate private sector investments, high level of risk and insufficient qualified professionals stands out. The Tillman Thomas government has identified agriculture as one of the five pillars of economic development and since taking office has sought to improve the quantity and quality of agricultural production as well as finding ways to modernize the sector. For the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Richard Peters. The Constitutional Review Committee of the Ministry of Legal Affairs met with representatives of the Opposition Constitution Reform Committee on Tuesday to update on the review process. Work is continuing on two levels, meetings with stakeholders and refining the constitutional document. Member of Parliament for Karku and Piti Mardik Affairs, Elvin Nimrod, who leads the Opposition Constitutional Review Committee, commended the appointed review committee for its all-inclusive approach. A series of meetings was held with both political parties as well as representatives from the Grenada Conference of Churches, non-government organizations, schools and community groups. This, Mr. Nimrod says, must be commended since the Constitution is for and about the people it serves. I really want to credit uh, Dr. McIntosh, Professor McIntosh, um, with the idea that, that, that we, it's time for we as Grenadians to look at a constitution that we have some input into. We've inherited a, con a constitution over which we really had no input. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us as Grenadians to, to really be able to have an input in this. And so the, the, the matter of consultation and working together, of course, is, a, is, a, is an ideal situation. And I'm sure at the end of the day, all of us would benefit from this. But we have to not bury our heads in the sand and have to realize we are a nation. We are a nation and we must have something that we own. And what else is better than, than our own constitutions? The process was initiated under the tenure of the new National Party administration and received full support from the Tillman Thomas administration. Senior legal counsel in the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Robert Branch, explains where the process is at. We've had uh, um, several consultations with stakeholders, um, uh, such as the NGOs, the churches, etc. We, we have been trying to meet with the new National Party for some time, but for one reason or the other, um, that has not happened. And so, this meeting today is very important because um, it will give us a sense of, of where we are. Um, the intention is that um, sometime there will be a referendum. And so this, this meeting is going to set the stage because it's, uh, the, the, the opposition is, uh, is important in this regard. The government has indicated the fact that um, they've, they've assigned me as a point person to deal with this issue and we've been Consulting suggests that they're serious about it. Um, the NNP has started it, and now, um, so we hope that at the end of this meeting we get a, a sense of, of where we're going and um, what issues uh, that are common, what issues they agree to. I think there's there's a general recognition by by um, both major political parties in the that there has to be some measure of reform of the constitution. We we have had some 
um, initial discussions with the leader of the opposition, Dr. Mitchell, and um, he is giving his blessing in that regard. Um, as, as regards the, the, the timing, we are not in a position to, to say so now, but um, the intention is that at, at some time, I, I think it's, it's safe to say that um, there has been some discussion of having a referendum after the election. Professor Simeon McIntosh, constitutional reform consultant who has been charged with lead responsibility for the review, is convinced the process is as thorough as it should be. He gave the assurance that the draft has the necessary regional support. The point I'm making about all these different meetings that we've had with stakeholder groups is that the document itself has been refined in the process. That, that is very important to know. In other words, that is one level of the work. Because, in, in other words, the very first draft that was put out for public consultation has been refined in the process of having discussions. For example, the chapter on the direct, on the director of audit, the office of the director of audit, the chapter on the um, on the director of public prosecutions, the chapter on the judiciary, all of these chapters have been fact been refined, and essentially what you have is a very refined draft now based on the consultations that we've had with these offices. We've had an excellent meeting last year with the Chief Justice and the Rules Committee of the Supreme Court to go over the chapter on the judiciary. That meeting lasted all day in St. Lucia. Then we've had the meetings here with the judges in Grenada. That meeting lasted for hours, where they've given the input into that chapter. Then we've had a meeting with the chief magistrate and her colleagues, the other magistrates, that meeting lasted for over an hour again where they've given the input. The meeting with the director of audit was most profitable because they were able to point out certain developments on the international scene with respect to that office, that we were able to show how in fact we might help refine the chapter. The meeting with the director of public prosecutions and his team, again, excellent meeting because they were able to point out how you could strengthen the office of the director of, of, of public prosecutions. And one of the things about the draft, therefore, is it made me realize that the current constitution has almost everything included under the chapter of public service. In other words, all these offices, obviously a director of audit, but director of public prosecution, magistrates always under the, um, the chapter of public service. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. GPC Global is a new, exciting and cost-effective service. For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable, and safe. Home is supposed to be my comfort zone. Yet, I'm in fear and feel so alone. My mother receives money. Yes, money from men who sexually abuse me. I tried to tell my mom, but she won't listen to me. She said, he's my big brother, my uncle, your father, my man. Don't call anyone's name. I never wanted this. I need to tell someone. Please, help me. A message from the Ministry of Social Development and its social partners.
continuing the news, lawmakers involved in the fight against gender-based violence held a one-day meeting at the National Stadium on Tuesday to discuss and examine pertinent matters related to its eradication. Among others, they focused on the psychosocial implications of victimization, working with victims, and highlights of the proposed sexual offense amendments to criminal code. Data from the Central Statistical Office revealed that in 2010, there were 336 reported cases of domestic violence, with the largest total of 183 being single women. In 2011, there were 462 reported cases, the highest total of 272 being single women. Mrs. Elaine Henry McQueen, the Senior Program Officer in the Ministry of Social Development, says they are expanding their services for the prevention and eradication of gender-based violence, protection of victims, and punishment of perpetrators. To do this, she says they need to increase the number of those accessing available services while reducing the level of cultural tolerance of violence towards women and girls. But she reminded those in attendance that while women are the main victims, there are men who experience domestic violence as well. Anytime we put a system in place or a law in place or a protocol or some policy in place, those will also, we will have them gender, almost some would say gender neutral. We would speak about a person. The Domestic Violence Act, as you would see, speaks about violence committed against a person. But recognizing the fact that the majority of victims are women, we have to target women as victims. And that is why we are doing this, using this kind of language of violence against women, which is the internationally accepted language, and um, trying to approach it from the context of the ways that people uh, behave towards women and girls. And not when I say people, not just men and boys, but women and girls too. Women and girls and men and boys have certain beliefs about subordination and who is in charge and so on. And those beliefs and attitudes affect the behaviors around gender-based violence. Between 2000 and 2012, there were 1,700 and 18 reported cases of indecent assault. Director of the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic, Mrs. Jacqueline Seeley Burke, says people need to be sufficiently equipped to work with those who are victims of gender-based violence. At the end of the day, it is about your service delivery. And so we want you to come to terms in a more, I think, deliberate way with the effects that abuse can have on victims. And therefore, given those effects, why the laws and policies can help mitigate some of the psychosocial fallout that happens when persons are victimized. The new Apostolic Nuncio of the Holy See to Grenada has promised to do all he can to promote the greater good of this country in mutual cooperation and to strengthen relations between the Holy See and Grenada. Archbishop Nicola Girasoli, who presented his letters of credence to the Governor General on Tuesday morning, says he also wants to strengthen bilateral relations between both for the well-being of the people of Grenada. The Holy See and the Vatican prioritize education because we firmly believe that uh, the future of Grenada will benefit a lot if the young generation are inspired and formed by mutual respect and the promotion of human rights as well as the other values upon uh, this beloved country is founded. But Holy See and the Vatican also underlines the importance of the family life. It is uh, within the family that the future generation receive their basic elements to become good and respectful citizens. The Holy See and Vatican supports and welcomes the regional cooperation among the nation states in order to face the impact of globalization and to promote harmonization and integration as well as the protection of human and legal, ri and legal rights in the region. Through a joint communique, Grenada and the Holy See established diplomatic relations on February 17, 1979. Governor General Sakhalai Glean hopes for continued good relations between Grenada and the Holy See. The Holy See has been very helpful over the years. We look forward to the 
relationship, the improvement of the relationship and service to Grenada at this time. Grenada is one of the small island developing states. And like the other small islands, have been very seriously affected by economically and, and socially by the global recession. The increased unemployment aggravated the poverty situation by creating the new poor, resulting in social decline, especially among the lower middle class. The economic situation has improved slightly, but the pressure is felt because of the high prices for basic and other commodities and services. The Ministry of the Environment continues its awareness on biodiversity and the environment in observance of International Biological Diversity Day. This was observed on May 22nd and also in observance of World Environment Day, which will be held on June 5. Details from Karine Maureen. The objective of the activities, which include a radio quiz on WeFM and appearances of environmental officials on GIS Spice Morning, is to create awareness on biodiversity and the importance of protecting the environment. A community projects day will be held on June 2nd, where individuals, groups and organizations are encouraged to adopt an area and participate in an environment-friendly project. A coastal walk from Pearls to Bathway is also planned for June 9th. Interested persons can contact the Ministry on 440 I am Karen Moraine reporting. That's news. The sports is up next. is not over as yet. Thursday, May 31st, get set for the annual Ribena Private Primary School Athletics Championship. National Athletic Stadium from 11 a.m. Be there for the sprints, throws, jumps, bicycle races, and the ever-exciting relays. Will the Grenada Junior Academy continue to dominate or will one of the other 16 schools triumph? Only time will tell. Admission, $10 adults, children pay three. So come root for your school. Thursday, May 31st, the 2012 Ribena sponsored Private Primary Schools Athletics Championship. Stars will be born. On your mark, set. The Windward Island Secondary Schools games are coming to Grenada, July 28th to August 4th, 2012. Be there to see track and field, football, netball, basketball, and volleyball. It's gonna be exciting as the best of the Windward Islands youth battle for supremacy. Catch the excitement as Grenada defends the title. It's the Windward Island Secondary Schools Games, July 28th to August 4th, 2012. Don't miss it. A shot comes into the far corner. It's a goal. Grenada have scored. Mentally strong to compete with England in the third test. The Kolkata Knight Riders win the 2012 Indian Premier League. St. Andrews Primary School dominate the boys' section of the 2012 mini tennis tournament. And English table tennis coach Jason Sukru impressed with the talent on show in Grenada. These and more are in this edition of the GI Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Coach Oles Gibson says that the West Indies' top order has endured a mental struggle and that something must be done to give them any hope in the third and final test against England. Gibson says that the weakness of the top order is a combination of both mental and technical skills, indicating that batsmen need to concentrate for longer periods at the crease. 
He says that the batsmen need to be more selective in their shot making, knowing when to play and not to play shots. Uh, Gibson singled out the work of uh, Marlon Samuels and Shivnarayan Chandra Paul, who he said batted for long periods because of their deep concentration. West Indies top four of Agent Barrett, uh, Kieran Powell, Darren Bravo and Kurt Edwards uh, have an appalling aggregate of 203, while the aggregate of the informed Samuels alone is an impressive 310. Gibson says that the top order will have to concentrate for much longer periods if they have to score runs in the third and final test, which starts at Edgbaston next week. He's hopeful that the players will emulate uh, Samuel and Chandra Paul, who have so far played splendidly. Samuel followed up his first innings uh, century with an unbeaten 76 as the West Indies as he ran out of partners, with the West Indies falling for miserly 161 in their second innings, which left England to score just 108 for victory, which they did for the loss of just one wicket. Uh, the West Indies coach says that they will be using the two-day game against Leicestershire to have the batsmen spend more time at the crease, attempting to come to grips with their flaws. He says that they are seriously considering moving Samuel or Bravo to the number three position to relieve Kirk Edwards, who is really struggling. Well, to let you know, England has now won seven series in a row at home. That's in England. And uh, they're sixth out of seven against the West Indies. West Indies has not won a test series in England in the last 24 years. Unbelievable. Winning just one of uh, 25 matches. <laughs> Uh, one of 25 tests they played uh, over that period. West Indies have only won two of the last uh, 32 test matches played against all opposition. And if they lose the uh, third test, they would drop to number eight in the ICC rankings. Uh, certainly, when you think about that, you look back at the 80s and 90s, uh, give you a sort of uh, <laughs> uh, parity when the West Indies ruled the world. Well, here at home, cricket officials are getting ready for the three-day one for three one-day internationals between the West Indies A and the India A team at the National Stadium in the next uh, four weeks. Uh, India A will soon be in the region for a two-match uh, Test series and one-day series against their regional counterparts. Grenada will host ODIs on the 27th, 29th of June and July 1st at the National Stadium. President of the Grenada Cricket Association, Gabriel Henry, says that a committee is already in place to organize three exciting games. He is confident that after an impressive showing, Grenada will again get the nod to host international games. Vera Sami Pamalap Gehana is leading the regional team, a team that is, which includes the likes of uh, Jason Holder, Devin Jabishu, Devon Thomas, Kevin McLean, Donovan Pagan, Johnson Charles, Linda Simmons, Jonathan Carter, Kyle Cobbin, and Kuma Bonner, Craig Buffett, and Dylan Johnson. A second weekend stand of 136 between uh, Bisler and Jack Callis led the Kolkata Knight Riders to an exciting five wicket win over the Chennai Super Kings in the final of the India Premier League on Sunday. The Chennai Super Kings posted a challenging 194-3 in their knock with Suresh Reina striking 73, Michael Hussey 54, and Murali VJ 42. But Kali 69 and Bishla 89 revived the situation after Skipham Gatam Gambia was bowled by Hilfenhurst with a score on 3 in the second over. It was the Kolkata Knight Riders' uh, first victory at the IPL and they celebrated in style. Tens of thousands of people turned out in the streets of Kolkata on Tuesday to cheer the champions. Politicians, uh, top actors and musicians, and cricket fans in general were part of the big celebrations. Report indicated that more than 50,000 fans uh, were at Eden Gardens for the victory ceremony. Fantastic indeed. Well, Seanal Belfon of the St. Andrews Primary School and uh, Padia Fakri of the Westmoreland Secondary 
were among the winners of the 2012 the Partner Sports Mini Tennis Championships stayed last week at Chantin. More than 70 youngsters, 43 boys and 31 girls from 15 schools participated in the two-day tournament. Coach Rita Hughes said that the St. Andrews Primary Schools dominated the boys' section. They had a very good little team this year. Um, Shawnee Belfon, uh, Jamal Belfon, and the, the actual winner was Brandon Mark. I don't know if I should call his alias. Uh, Ulrich could laugh now, but I guess everyone knows him as crab sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He is a real champion little guy. He's got a magical smile. He's having fun. He won the boys' uh, singles, and surprisingly, he beat some boys uh, that have played more mini tennis than him, like Javon, Javon Drix of St. Mary's, and in the final with Akinde Redhead um, of St. George's Anglican Senior. That was a nice little final. Um, who else did we see there? We saw like persons like um, Javon finishing third, uh, Christian Warner, um, Shawnee Belfon and Jamal played for fifth and sixth, and that's where they, the top three results you know, that's how we accumulated the points. So St. Andrews had first, fifth, and sixth. And then in the girls, um, Fadia Fakri from Westmoreland, who has been at it quite steadily, Ifina Patrick, uh, little Samisha Elcock of Grenada Junior Academy, unfortunately, she had an injury in the quarterfinal, Crystal Redhead, uh, Kema Hazard, and, and others. And of course, uh, Coach uh, Richard Hughes saying that Brandon Mark was the boys' winner. And uh, he says that mini tennis has become a growing sport in the Spice Hour. This uh, concept is being promoted internationally, as you know, by the International Tennis Federations and many uh, federations around the world. Um, in Europe, it's very big. Uh, the United States is just sort of catching on, but I'm proud to say that, you know, we've been doing this here 16 years. Um, we didn't always have nice nets like that. We used to use rope. And we used to use <laughs> chairs and tie nets to chairs and anchor them into our blocks, you know. But uh, it's nice that we have these nets through the Ministry of uh, Youth Empowerment and Sport now. You says that the 2012 event went off smoothly. It went um, smooth. We, we kept the place pretty clean at the end of day one because, uh, you know, Ministry of Youth and Empowerment and Sport provided um, refreshment for the children and lunch for the teachers. And um, we kept it pretty clean at the, at the end of day one and, you know, cleaned up after. That senior tennis coach, Richie Hughes. English table tennis coach, Jason Sukru, is impressed with the talent on show in Grenada. Sukru is coming to the end of a three-week exercise organized by the Department of Sports. He has been attempting to furnish uh, the 30 youngsters and senior players with the latest developments in the game. In the session that I saw Jason sort of run on Saturday morning was very impressive with just three table tennis tables and, and so many kids actually taught me a thing or two so it was quite a good experience for me um, and in terms of last night the senior players was, was really really good you know the seniors are always a, a little bit different and uh, like to give a bit of stick and they were ready to play a few matches and stuff so it was good fun really enjoyed it so you far the youngsters were taught the basics of the game when you're younger you just want to you know you want to hit the ball as hard as you can and, and that's the stuff that excites you but it's very important that you get the fundamentals and the basics really really strong and from there the game you can you know you can improvise and adapt and learn your own skills so with the junior players it's just trying to cement some of the stuff that Jason's talking about give them really solid basics make sure that they you know the, the, the soft skills are good and they can keep the ball on the table to a good level and then from there they can branch out and do a little bit different England table tennis coach Jason Sugru local coach and national champion Jason Stanis Claus is impressed with the outcome of the stint he says that the interest from both junior and senior players have been exceptional. If I if I call uh, uh, um, out the players out, they may come comes out. But when there is a difference in terms of of, of of nationality, right, they always tend to prefer, right, and 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 pay more more attention to if a foreigner tells them something in a local. So they came out, they uh, came on out. This occasion more than, they more than usual. Than, more than usual yeah, because they came out from Mr. Sugru. Yes, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sweet, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> because even the senior players, some of the things I've been, I mean, trying to teach them many, many years ago, I mean, they, they still make the errors, and, and you can see the difference. And in, in when he is, is, is telling them, and that's the things that 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 is one of the, the difficult tasks we have in our job. That so, you, we tend to, to, to give preference to, to, to someone else 
outside of our, our, our right. nationality than, right. than the local person who, who's basically doing the same thing. But, but again, you know, who knows that, that, that what it is. <laughs> Senior tip tennis coach yeah, Jason Scannis calls more respect uh, to the uh, outsiders than those at home. It really happens. That sports and travel threats. It would be easy that I would make a lot of money. You said no one would ever suspect me of trafficking drugs. You never said if I got caught, I could go to jail for up to 15 years. You never said my children would grow up without me and my parents could die before I got out of jail. You made me lie to my family. You said it was easy money for me and my children. You held me put drugs inside my body. You never said if one of the bags in my stomach bursts, I could die. You have a choice. Don't be anyone's drug new. Sponsored by the Government of Grenada and the European Union. Telephone 4407911. Start your morning with the Government Information Service. Tune in to GIS Spice Morning, Mondays through Fridays, starting 6.45 a.m. Spice up and brighten your morning with an informative television show with guests from a broad cross-section of society. You too can be a part of our Spice Morning. Call us at 440-2061 or email gisgrenada at yahoo.com. GIS TV Channel 12, your best choice for educational and entertaining television. Trevor, recapping the main points, the high cost of electricity in the region has been a major talking point at Carolex CEO Symposium. It was held at the Grenadian Birex Resort. OECS Agriculture Ministers examined revised action plan for the sector and opposition updated on constitutional review process. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.